Finding God in the Psalms. That's the title of the book we're looking at today in our series, What We Are Reading. And today it's episode 46. And I'd like to share some thoughts with you today in case you'd find it useful and interesting about a book I read recently called Finding God in the Psalms by N.T. Wright, the renowned scholar and prolific author. The subtitle of the book is Sing, Pray, Live. In other words, what N.T. Wright is trying to do is provide some thoughts on the Psalms that will help us to not only enjoy the Psalms themselves, but for them to have an imp impact on our lives. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. I would like to show you uh, a copy of the book to see what it looks like, but um, it's a Kindle version, so uh, you'll have to look it up yourselves, although I will put a picture in the show notes uh, when I put this up online. So first of all, my motivation in reading this particular book. So I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more the Psalms seem to be relevant to my life. Uh, I connect with some of them and some of the themes in the Psalms now in ways I never did when I was younger. Things that have happened in my life, things I've learned about God, things that I just need help with or understanding about. Um, different Psalms become relevant at different points in our lives. And I want to encourage you, even at the beginning of this, to say, don't neglect the Psalms. Whatever stage of life you're in, you're going to find from the beginning of your Christian walk to the end, there's always new things uh, that seem irrelevant to us from the Psalms. Uh, I picked up the book, the Kindle version, in the hopes that uh, Wright would combine his scholarship, which is well-renowned, with his pastoral heart. He did serve as a, as a bishop for many years, and I did find that blend in this book, which I rather like. It is scholarly on one level, but it's also very pastoral and applicable to life on another. I like that combination. It's also not one of N.T. Wright's longer books, if you've seen some of those long, weighty tomes. But I did find that they, what I was learning from the book was helping me to apply what I was learning about the Psalms to my own life, my own walk with God, my own times of quiet with God. So I think you may find that too if you'd like to read the book. Now the basic premise of the book, what N.T. Wright says is that he feels the church hasn't always made the best use of the Psalms in the way that it could. By all means, he says, write new songs. Each generation must do that. But to neglect the church's original hymn book is, to put it bluntly, crazy. Let's not neglect the Psalms. Perhaps too often we try and shortcut our way from the word of the psalmist to our own. Maybe we impoverish the Psalms by only looking for those which address our current needs directly, and so we've become too selective. One of the things to consider is whether we should pray through the Psalms regularly, from the beginning to the end, whatever order we like, but perhaps the Psalms would reward a more diligent approach characterized by entering the world of the Psalmist before considering its application to our own lives. And this is something the book helps with considerably. He says, actually, again and again, it is we, muddled and puzzled and half-believing, who are the problem. And the question is more how we can find our way into their world, that's the world of the Psalmist or the Psalmist's, uh, into the faith and hope that shine out in one psalm after another. So rather than saying, there's a psalm that's going to help me, how about, first of all, entering the world of the psalmist? And I think that's a very good point. Wright states his goal of writing the book as this. I propose in this book that the regular praying and singing of the psalms is transformative. That's a key word that he uses many times in the book but it's transformative. It's not just informational, it's not just comforting, but transformative. If the goal is transformation, of course, we're in good company because we know that Jesus and his disciples, for them, their hymn book and their perhaps primary prayer book, if you like, was the Psalms themselves. So, methodology. The methodology of the book, it's not a commentary on the Psalms. So if you're looking for a commentary, you want to go to Bruegemann, you want to go to other writers. Uh, this is not a commentary. Don't come expecting a commentary and a co or a comprehensive and thorough treatment of all the Psalms. That's not the point of the book. But he does divide uh, his book into the following uh, categories or sections, which I shall share with you, but you can look this up. The first part is pray and live. The second is at the threshold of God's time. He talks quite a lot about the, the time and how God views time and how the Psalms help us to understand God's view of time and space as well, where God dwells. All the trees of the forest sing for joy. 
being at home in the Psalms, and then his own personal afterword on his life with the Psalms, which is very personal and uh, heartwarming. So let me go on to talk about some of the key areas addressed in the book. Since the Psalms were the poetry and the hymn book of the early church, and Second Temple Judaism, even before the days of the, uh, the church, and they underpin the times of Jesus and the early church. It's important to enter that worldview, and this book helps us to enter that worldview of, of if you like, what Second Temple Judaism, to help us understand not only the Jewish uh, perspective at that time, but also Jesus himself and his followers and the early church, and how that shaped their worship and their thinking about God. Uh, Wright asks us to consider the way, the, way, the way in which the Psalms help us to understand how time, space, and matter were viewed at that time. Let me quote here. I am suggesting that the entire worldview that the Psalms are inculcating was to do with that intersection of our time, space, and matter with God's, which Christians believe happened uniquely and dramatically in Jesus. The Psalms remind us that there's a bigger picture behind the clutter of our daily view of life. He says the Psalter, Psalter forms the great epic poem of the Creator and Covenant God who will be, who will at the last visit and redeem his people and be with them his whole creation. So God is coming, but he's also here. Time, space, and matter matter to God and to us. And the Psalms help us to see that intersection of God's time, space, and matter with our time, space, and matter is a large part of his point. The Psalms help us to remember our role in redeeming creation. What's our part? Particularly, you might like to look at Psalms 22, 51, and 89. And by the way, all of these references are in the show notes. Wright says, humans have sinned, but God will still work through them. Israel has sinned, but God will still use its people to bless the nations. Monarchs have sinned grievously, but God still promises to bring the world into subjugation under his anointed king. The Psalms focus on the temple and the Torah as representative of God's presence with his people, particularly, for example, Psalms 2, 9, 42 to 43, 15, 24 and 48 as examples. They remind us of what it means to live um, what we might call a God with us life, that we're not living our lives here and God is living his life out there, over there, in eternity, but we are living a God with us life. So the same way that the Torah and the Temple were seen in Second Temple, Second Temple Judaism as being a representative of God being with us, the Psalms help us to understand more deeply what that means on a personal level, not just that it's a, a building or a book, but that God is with us in our contemporary, present, everyday lives, the here and now. Our discipleship is informed and inspired by, let me quote here, here is the challenge for those who take the New Testament seriously. Try singing these psalms Christologically, thinking of Jesus as their ultimate fulfillment. See how they sound, what they do, and where they take you. And I like that idea. The Psalms are taking us somewhere different. The Psalms are illuminating things. The Psalms are helping us to be creative in our thinking. The Psalms are, are catalyzing, inspiring us to think differently about ourselves and Jesus. Why not to take some time to pray and sing through the Psalms in the way that he suggests? And finally, as N.T. Wright points out, the Psalms are very, are very physical. They're rooted in physicality. Just to mention a few examples, uh, the Psalms reference mountains and valleys and trees and fields and sheep, oceans, stars, and many more things. Psalm 148 might be the ultimate example of that. So they remind us, this, this physicality of the Psalms remind us that God's creation is good. None of those references are saying that what God has made is not good. What God has made is beautiful, is representative of who he is and his provision and his generosity. So they remind us God's creation is good and that we do well to take the material aspect of God's creativity seriously. We should celebrate his creativity. As Wright says, what looks to the flattened out imagination of late Western modernity, like lifeless matter, is in fact a world-throbbing 
with God-given life. That life is constantly praising its maker by being particularly and peculiarly what it is. So everything in being what it is helps us to celebrate who God is. Well, to wrap up a couple of personal reflections, firstly, uh, I think reading the book Wright reminded me that the Psalms are not just for personal comfort, and there's a place for that, but it's not just about finding a Psalm to help me because I feel a bit down or a bit fed up or a bit depressed or discouraged or even to help me celebrate because I'm excited about something. It's not just about my personal comfort. It's spiritual transformation that is the point of all of God's Word, actually, and in particular, perhaps, the Psalms. The Psalms are designed, it are, are designed to come alongside me, that is true, uh, with my uh, situations in life, but not only to come alongside me, but to change me. The point of praying the Psalms is to enter into a fuller understanding of God whilst in his presence, such that his spirit touches my spirit, uh, revives my spirit, uh, speaks to my spirit. As Wright says, Sing these songs, and they will renew you from head to toe, from heart to mind. Pray these poems, and they will sustain you on the long, hard, but exhilarating road of Christian discipleship. So whenever I'm teaching or recording anything about Psalms, I always go back to this book. I've been doing that for a while now. I go back, and even though, as I say, it's not a commentary, there's an index in the back with all the Psalm references, and if I'm looking for a particular Psalm or a particular topic, I can go to that and see what Wright has written about it. I find it very helpful. The greater value in the book, though, I think, is the way in which the Jewish understanding of the Psalms helped to illuminate early Christian thinking about the nature of God and the purpose of the Church, God's people, uh, you could say. So I think we miss something when we look only to the epistles in the book of Acts for our understanding of the church. The Psalms were the hymn book of the early church, and so they help us to understand a lot of how the church uh, thought about God, uh, which of course shaped not only its understanding about God, but the way it then lived out uh, its calling. Emissaries of the kingdom, and indeed what they were thinking they were telling the rest of the world about God when and, uh, and associated matters. So who would I recommend this book for? Well, pretty much anybody who's interested in deepening their spiritual walk with God. A deeper understanding of the Psalms, if you want that, this is definitely going to help. And in particular, if you're interested in the connection between the Jewish and early Christian ways of thinking about God, I think you'll find this useful. So that's what I want to say about that. The title of the book, Finding God, Finding God in the Psalms. A terrific book. I really enjoyed it. And I go back to it again and again, using it for a reference. Please let me know if this recording has been useful or interesting to you. And if you have any comments about the book, if you've read it, or if you've read any other material on similar topics, please do comment and let me know. Drop a note in the uh, chat in the box below and on YouTube or send me an email if you like with your thoughts. My email address is malcolm at malcolmcox.org. You can find me on my website, which is malcolmcox.org. And a couple of things. If you are not yet on my newsletter subscription list, then please do sign up for that. If you do, I will send you a free ebook on how to grow, how God grows his people, a book about spiritual disciplines, which I think you may find, I hope, really interesting and helpful. So if you know anybody who might benefit from this recording, do send them the link. It only takes, what, two clicks or so? So send it on to anybody, and, and I'll be very grateful for that, and hopefully they would too. Well, that's our uh, what we are reading for this week. Next week, well, I haven't decided what I'm going to put up next week. I have some ideas, but you'll have to come back again next Wednesday will be the next edition. And until then, I hope you have a wonderful day and a, a God with us day for you, and that you that you find God in those amazing psalms that we are so blessed to be able to read and sing and pray through.